greetings sisters and greetings brothers. Um, um, I first have to apologise for a slight change in the agenda. I'm a criminal, criminal defence lawyer, work closely with uh, uh, Sister Esther over a number of years, well over a decade now. Um, and um, unfortunately I have to be for a, a young member of our community, a young African boy at uh, uh, Reading. Uh, police station later on tonight. His mother's asked me to come down to Reading Police Station later on this evening. And so that's why the agenda's been changed. But I'll crack on because <clears throat> I want to talk, I want to give um, very, very briefly um, my observations. And these are just my observations so that, because this is a family space in which we have dialogue and participatory dialogue, grassroots understandings of legal issues. I want to give my observations with regards to the um, this CARICOM, this group of um, and this group of twelve, there's twelve English-speaking uh, nations. Also, there's um, Haiti, um, which we know is under occupation at the moment, and also Suriname. So we have those uh, nations which are uh, part of this initiative, um, seeking uh, reparations. Um, from the f uh, former colonial um, entities, uh, United, uh, United Kingdom, France, uh, Holland. So this framework, this, um, this uh, attempt um, at uh, reparations, I will argue from a critical legal perspective, it's not an attempt at reparations at all. Hmm. Uh, Sisters and Brothers, are, um, um, a radio station um, and a media outlet called a Black Agenda Report, based in uh, New York and also in Washington, D.C., a brother called Glenn Ford, he's described this as a nice aid package with a reparations bow wrapped around it. And that's, that's in reality what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a nice aid package with a reparations bow wrapped around it. Now, there's a law firm called Lee Day and Partners, based uh, in, in London, and they were the law firm who were instructed in relation to the uh, High Court proceedings regarding um, Kenyan torture victims, the liberation struggles of the 19, uh, 1940s and 50s, when atrocities were committed against Africans in that liberation struggle, concentration camps, mutilations, um, a whole range, you name it, uh, the British, true to their colonial tradition, <laughs> true to their colonial tradition, mm. um, engaged in those injustices um, in um, in, that, in that East African uh, country. Now, Lee Day and Co. were the lawyers in, that, um, in those proceedings, and they earned substantially more money than the torture victims um, themselves. But that said, it gave them a degree of um, legitimacy of a small L in the, in the eyes of some, and they were able to use the kudos and the publicity which arose from that to, to look around and think, well, we've been successful in this, um, in this context in relation to the um, the uh, injustices meted out to uh, Africans and, and those in the African diaspora. Let's see how we can develop this and develop this this um, goodwill, if it were, if you can put it that way, in relation to African suffering, disadvantage, and, uh, and legacy of colonialism. So they, they, they presented a case to uh, these CARICOM nations. They presented a case to these CARICOM nations. Um, and the... Um, they, they bit it. So what we have is a situation now where um, a case is being formulated with regards to reparations, and I very much think we should bear in mind what, what has been said. An aid package with a reparations bow wrapped around it. For those sisters and brothers who have just come into the room, my name's uh, uh, Kevin Cobham. I'm talking about um, <clears throat> giving a critical legal perspective in regards to uh, the CARICOM initiative in relation to reparations. Um, the intention is to take this, um, uh, this lawsuit to the um, International Court of Justice. The International Court of Justice is, the, is normally the, the, the institution, the forum whereby um, disputes between nation states are settled. It's based in The Hague. And that's the, that's the intention to do it. Well, of course, Sister Jackie, um, in, in uh, welcoming everybody and in making um, us understand why it is we are here, spoke specifically about a bottom-up approach to uh, legal understanding, jurisprudential knowledge, and the dissemination of knowledge so that we ourselves can each one teach one and be our own lawyers, so that we understand both on a domestic level and on an international level, and, and, and 
given historical perspective, um, from a grassroots understanding of the ways in which the law presents opportunities to ourselves to stretch the limits of the bourgeois notion of law and legality. When you reach those limits, it then, it then, we then get a, a potentially revolutionary situation because we see the lie of the limit and the lie of the construct which protects the interests of those states which um, impose their political and economic uh, framework upon us. But also as well, it's an opportunity as well to understand that if we are, as Africans, talking about um, legal practice from the grassroots up, how can it be that we, as Africans in the diaspora and on the continent, should, should, should leave the most important, amongst the, if not the most important, certainly a more, very important issue, the, the uh, issue and the case for reparations in the hands of elected heads of state. How can that be? <coughs> now, leaving, leaving aside, well, I don't have time for this, and um, some people here will be glad, but leaving aside um, uh, discussions that I would want to have about the, the democratic fraud of participatory democracy, where you put your ex against, uh, against a candidate's name every five years, and then allow your uh, elected representatives to administer, to administer capitalism on, um, on the behalf of corporations and give you some crumbs once they're satisfied. Leaving that aside, what we have in the Caribbean is these states who have flag independence, not real independence, flag independence. So leaving, leaving aside questions of the, the of, um, legitimacy of what we call uh, democracy, leaving aside uh, uh, for the time being questions about um, the independence or otherwise of these statelets in the Caribbean, um, what we have is a situation where aid packages are being presented. And let's bear in mind, let's bear in mind what the situation is in the Caribbean at, at the moment. The um, ideologically induced austerity which the world is suffering has meant there's been a downturn, a downturn in uh, tourism revenues in the Caribbean. Not only that, the um, all of those previously historic arrangements between former colonial countries and individual nations who produce crops such as bananas, etc., uh, with regards to um, trade uh, arrangements, that that has there has been an impact with regards to the way in which the EU and other um, international um, organisations uh, have dealt with the 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 facilitating of. Um, <coughs> of foreign currency into these nations. So most, of, most if not all of these nations at the moment, those who have put themselves forward to this uh, International Court of Justice um, uh, um, exercise, have balance of payment problems at the moment, have debt crisis at the moment. They have issues in relation to these, in, in, in relation to these matters. Now, would we be satisfied when I say we, I mean African we, I mean grassroots African we. Would we, wherever we might be as Africans, on the continent and the, and the diaspora, would we be satisfied with what would be ultimately a relatively uh, modest financial statement for the 500 years of enslavement, barbarity, colonialism, neo-colonialism, would we be satisfied with, the, uh, with David Cameron or whoever else being able to turn to the general populace and to the world and say we have paid some financial um, recompense for the injustices of 500 years? Would we be satisfied with that? The, the answer is in my question that speaks for itself. Um, we, um, we have to be looking at, uh, from a critical legal perspective, we have to be looking at the notion of reparations also encompassing political and social change within those islands which are now seeking to go to the International Court of Justice. We, we have to be looking at a set of new social relations, a set of new social <coughs> relations, not those handed down on the neo-colonial plate which is then administered by uh, these, um, these uh, so-called elected leaders in, in uh, CARICOM and elsewhere in the African world on, on the behalf, not of us, but ostensibly on the behalf of African populists, but on, on the behalf of, um, of, of, um, of capital. 
if people don't understand what I say by capital, of business, if people don't understand what I, I, I say by business, of those who exploit our labour, our land, our resources for their profit, the overwhelming proportion of which gets re-exported out um, of, our, of our nations and away from our people. There was um, a Jewish, an English, um, German English uh, Jewish uh, historian called Eric Hosborn, who spoke about the exportation of exploitation. Um, and when he talked about the exportation of um, exploitation, what he was talking about was the way in which the working class, the, the working class uh, classes of, of of the global north. Europeans, North Americans, for want of a better term, were able to benefit from our benefit in a small b because they still were exploited. But the welfare state that they had, the privileges they had vis-a-vis -vis their bosses, etc., all of that was off the backs of us. The exploitation of, the, of, the, of their working class was palliated, minimised to some extent, in order that. In order, in, 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 order, in, in, in order that further exploitation could take uh, place amongst Africans. And of course, we were not considered human enough for it to matter. Now, I don't need to um, educate or elaborate to the overwhelming majority of us here in this uh, room about... Uh, 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 enslavement of Africans or colonialism, so I, so I won't waste time doing that, and I'm mindful of the clock. Um, but just to give a, to get back to pu putting my legal hat on, I think it's important that in challenging, um, from a grassroots uh, bottom-up <coughs> perspective, the um, CARICOM head of, Heads of Government initiative, we have to do that on several fronts. We have to do that on the front of, um, of uh, actually um, confronting Lee Day and co solicitors here in the UK, asking of them what steps they have taken to avail themselves of the knowledge of the African communities here in London and the UK with regards to the um, case which they seek to put before the ICJ. What has been their African uh, input? Who have they turned to? If not, why not? And we should make demands upon uh, Lee Day that they should do so. And if they don't, and let's assume that they don't, because the likelihood is that they won't, we should let, we should let it be known. Yes. We should let it be known that they thought that they could, could, they could pursue this initiative in the absence of African voice. Because reparations is also about the liberation and emancipation of African voice. Lee Day and co are acting as a legal NGO, almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those, those neo-colonial NGOs who have taken over the, the, the white man's burden, the yeah, civilising right. mi mission, yeah, and right. when they go and take over the white man's burden, they don't want to hear anything from the black man or the black woman. Mm -hmm. they're, they're there to tell us how it's That's to be right. done. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Now, given the significance of who it is that we are, our identification, with the movement for reparations, it cannot be left to another white NGO. So on, the, so one front is tackling and dealing with uh, Lee Day. I'm concluding. The other front, and I will be participating in this, is dissemination of the actual structural procedural steps by which these CARICOM um, communities seek to go to the ICJ, so that we we are there at every hurdle to initiate challenge and also develop links with our brothers and sisters in the, in, in, in the CARICOM countries in Haiti and also in Suriname who themselves on a grassroots level are seeking to engage in, re in, 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 in resistance and alternative grassroots voice because that alternative voice is the true voice mm. Mm. and if we do that, that will give, and I'm talking practically here, that will give them ballast, strength and a recognition of solidarity across the seas and a recognition that our struggle is their struggle and even though we, there may be some here who are not from those islands, maybe some here who are not from Suriname or, or Haiti, it doesn't matter, we're all Africans and we hold hands together yes. in this struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.